Monica, bro. Uh-oh. Dixie. That's right, bitch. I have it all. What do you think you have, McCall? I have Patrick Stone on tape telling the world that you're on the cartel's payroll. Besides myself and Alvarez, there are two federal agents who will back up that testimony. Agent Guerra deals drugs and is implicated in the 4th of July bombing. Huh. Evans killed a former FBI agent and may have conspired with a cartel hitman to murder the only real witness in this investigation. Alvarez would say anything to save his own neck. No, no one's going to believe any of it. So you're saying it's Vietnam all over again? Not necessarily. You did break the cartel. Some people might even consider you a hero. Uh -uh. And if you level these false accusations against me, things will go very badly for you. Walk away, detective. That's all you have to do. This is the biggest fucking wine cellar in human history. What the fuck Don't am I looking even at? Blink, motherfucker. I got him! In here! What the hell is this? An underground dock or some shit? You're wasting your time, man. I got friends high up on the food chain. One call, and I'm a free man. No, not this time, Tony. Your friends don't fucking impress whoa, me. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing, man? Jesus Christ, come on, we can work this out. What do you want? I want you to pay for all the fucking misery you've caused. This huh. is for Jess, you evil you son of a McCall. bitch. I want to see Dixon and Waters behind bars. That won't happen without his testimony. And they will give this fucker immunity. And he will skate. Just like he always does. Well, fuck that. Not this time. No fucking way. You know huh. I won't let you kill him. Why the fuck not? There's a shitload of money here. We can split it three ways and no one will ever know. Wow, gee, he's not crooked. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking <laughs> about starting over, man. I'm talking about a clean fucking slate. Look, I owe people money. And this could solve all my problems. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Hey, it's going in somebody's pocket. Some asshole in DC with more juice than us is gonna walk away with all of it, man. A payday like this will be set for life. And I'll be done with this shit. You will never be done, Ese. Shut the fuck up. The FBI paid off all your paper, puto. And in return, they got all kinds of incriminating shit. And they're gonna hold it over your head until the day you're dead. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Ask her. What the hell is he talking about? It's true. How the fuck does Alvarez know about this? Because he's a federal informant. Huh. He's our man inside the cartel. Oh, shit. You can't kill him, then. Wow. They got you by the balls, brother. And my offer still holds. You lying motherfuckers. Huh. You got that right. It's a Mexican standoff. Choose the lesser of two evils. Yeah, but in the end, you're still choosing evil. I want to kill my teammates. I don't want to fight. Oh, shit. What happens? Fine. Do it. Oh, fuck. Oh, he doesn't do it. Holy shit. We could have been set for life. All three of us. Split three ways. <laughs> the corruption has apparently spread to the highest levels of the Justice Department, as Alvarez's testimony implicates Assistant Deputy Director Shane Dixon in the scandal. Oh, wow. A special Senate committee is looking into any and all links between the Department of Justice and the Mendoza cartel. Members of the interagency task force created by Dixon are all under investigation. Huh. DEA agent Edward Guerra is suspected of working with the Mendoza cartel. He is accused of complicity in the murder of Jessica Stone, the daughter of the 
the FBI agent killed in the bombing. Oh wow! Witness in the case. Maybe he was the killer. He killed there. Complicity in the Stone murder is FBI Special Agent Kimberly Evans. In addition, she's being charged with the shooting death of retired FBI agent Kevin Dunn. So she did assassinate him. The huh. Attorney General has promised his full cooperation with any investigation. The Special Interagency Task Force has been, on balance, a success. The Mendoza cartel has been crushed. And Michael Duke, CEO of Peacekeepers International, was killed while resisting arrest. Hmm. His entire organization has been implicated in the smuggling and distribution of illegal military weaponry. More importantly, the tensions between Mexico and the U.S. have calmed considerably. We have come together as allies, working side by side for the common good. Joe Miguel, L.A. Times. Some believe this scandal has revealed a shocking weakness in our domestic security apparatus. Would you care to comment on that? Uh. A free country is always exposed to such dangers. The very freedom that protects us also can make us vulnerable, as we all experienced on September 11th. But it is the rule of law and our Constitution that is the backbone and strength of our democracy. With tools like the Federal Witness Protection Program, we can protect those who step forward like Mr. Alvarez, who testified against his former employer. Yeah, he did walk. Because he had the courage to do the right thing. Mr. Alvarez will have a second chance. And isn't that what this country is all about? Yeah, it's too bad that the Stone family don't get a fucking second chance. Jessica was 31? She looked like she was fucking 15. Holy shit. Very reminiscent of the ending of Metal Gear, so uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, huh? Only there's no big boss secret ending that we've been walking out. <laughs> That's it, Call of Horrors the Cartel. Interesting ending, and I guess there are multiple endings depending on who you're playing as and what choice you make. If I'd chosen to kill my teammates, then who knows what would have happened. It might have been a different ending. Interesting. Well, pretty good. A couple, a couple hiccups here and there with waypoint issues and bugs, but besides the couple, you know, hiccups. A pretty solid FPS campaign. You know, a lot of people were saying before this game, before I even started playing it, the campaign's only four hours long. Uh, no it's not. The campaign here was over five hours long. It was almost, I think, let's say that was like two and a half plus another three and a half. It was probably about five to six hours long, which is longer than all the Call of Duty games that have been coming out recently. And it was pretty interesting. Um... Some generic gameplay, yes, but I liked... What I actually liked about this was trying to get all the achievements. Uh, you know, I actually went ahead and tried to... There were certain stages where I used pistols or, or revolvers instead of other better handguns because you get an achievement for it and stuff like that. So I did, uh... I did actually enjoy getting some of the achievements uh, in the game. I thought they were pretty neat. But uh, let's get out of this. What I want to do now, since we... This is the cool thing about the games that have you play, is once you beat them... That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to you play. And now I can use the points that I got during the campaign of this game, and I can buy stuff or unlock stuff that's on the disc. So you're going to see there'll be some cool things we can unlock here. Let's see what we have. You play content may not be accessible to all audiences, blah, blah, blah. And I still say it's beta, even though the damn thing's been out for years. I love that. It's been out for like three years. All right, so here we go. How do I unlock? It's uh, oh, rewards, I believe. So here we go. I've got 140 Uplay points. Probably because I've got some left over from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood as well. So look at what I get to unlock here. I get to unlock a Call of Juarez, the cartel theme. Cool. An enhanced pistol clip. 
my hands clip for pistols in the co-op campaign. See, well, if I wanted to do that, I'd get it. The C-75 pistol, exclusive new pistol for the co-op campaign, and then multiplayer skins. One for the cops and one for the gangsters. I'll redeem that. I probably won't redeem the other two simply because I already beat the game. I don't necessarily need those upgrades. And what that is, the points actually carry over to other games, too. So later on, when I go to, uh... When I go to play the game... Oh, look at this. This this one is beat the game with all three characters. So if you beat the game three times, you get another 40 points. But I got Rio Bravo, which was kill 100 enemies using revolvers. I got Brain Surgery, which is kill 50 enemies with headshots. And the Police Academy, beat the first level of the co-op campaign. I got points for all those, and I was able to unlock some stuff. So this is pretty neat. Now, the next time I get a Uplay game, what I'm going to do, since I have 90 leftover points... I'll see if there's stuff, like, right off the bat in Assassin's Creed Revelations, for example, that I can unlock, because sometimes there is, so... We'll see what, uh... We'll see what happens once that game comes out. But anyway, that's it for the campaign of Call of Juarez the Cartel. It was pretty, you know, it's... it's you could say it's a generic FPS. I think a lot of people kind of wrote it off and said that. I think it is a little bit interesting, because you have the personalities of the characters. There's a lot of voice acting and a lot to the story. I think the story is actually interesting, trying to figure out everyone's angle on what's going on, if anyone is a double agent or whatever. So, uh, I did actually like the campaign of this game, even though it did have some hiccups and it was a little bit annoying at parts. So, yeah, a pretty decent experience, pretty fun, and did a decent length. And uh, overall, it was uh, a decently good experience. Nothing revolutionary, obviously, but, but it was a... Uh, Pretty fun, well-rounded FPS, I have to say. So, pretty good.